Buenos días, damas y caballeros, distinguidos este, anfitriones de Bogotá y quienes asisten virtualmente. Mi nombre es Trey Ashley Garen y yo he viajado desde Canadá específicamente para estar presente aquí en este evento. By equipping the ongoing reshaping of justice in Colombia. And our massive transformative purpose is justice is all of us. We do this by engaging in deep listening practices to strengthen the collective voice of Colombians from all walks of life and apply deep learning and deep recollection through exponential technologies to expand the capacity and trust of Colombians through justice. Our primary outcome to champion those who want to participate in the evolution of something better for their society in a scalable way. So where do we start? Quite simply and profoundly, we need to start with the experiences of Colombians, starting with those who work day to day in the justice system. For example, there are Jueces de Paz and Pesoneros who serve the outlying neighborhoods, and many times the only way that they can manage their crucial work is by having informal agreements with local armed groups which has caused many to lower their profile and act as silent mediators. We've also been in contact with regular citizens, lawyers, researchers, politicians, and global experts to ask them about their experiences, over 60 interviews and counting. And those common denominators had a common denominator emerge. The judges and employees of the justice system feel just as frustrated with the system as civilians, lawyers, and those on the fringes do. And part of our role is to help Colombians shift that frustrated feeling into something better, more, and different for yourselves and for your country. So we propose, in other words, we're here to propose a technological option, but ultimately, we're only mostly gringos. Ultimately, whatever we propose, we're very aware that it needs to be a pathway by which Colombians can create their own solutions. This means that participation of the people needs to be seen as an outcome, not as an input. This means that technology is not the ends, it needs to be the means. So what might that look like? And so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Emerson. Thank you, Trey. It's important that any technological option be relevant to all lawyers and corporate en- from corporate to NGOs to justices in the higher courts and jueces promiscuos, and ultimately for that option to be relevant, relevant for citizens as well. Here's what our platform will offer. A comprehensive service that aims to promote alternative dispute resolutions, estimate the probability of losing and winning a case to encourage people to find alternative solutions, Facilitate the daily work of lawyers to help to analyze relevant information. Promote the collaborative learning and critical thinking to assist users to stay up to date on relevant topics by learning from peers. All the while having a direct impact on the work of judges by consolidating jurisprudence and lines of precedence. Analyzing both the user generated data coming in real time and leveraging historical data of judicial decisions. And lastly, having the ability to download data and access results. Initially being restricted to just higher courts, but with basic data and statistics being available to the public in the future. It's important to note that the RAB came up with seven needs to be addressed by this project. We have grouped these into three core judicial needs, namely transparency, speed, and ease. Let's address each one of these. So let's begin with transparency. The distinct way we are tackling transparency is through an app and a website bridged by Holochain. Let's use a metaphor from biomimicry to explain hollow chain. Ants use pheromone trails much like breadcrumbs to mark a path from food to the colony. When they run into another worker, they share a taste of the food they've collected. 
so that the other ant can follow the pheromone path back to where it came from. When the other ant finds the food, they essentially cumulatively validate its value. Holochain does the same thing with agency. It validates all signatures to verify the veracity of data. This allows monitoring, confidence in the data, and ultimately builds trust in the system. Which brings us to the next point, Holochain's immune system. When Holochain notices a node with an incorrect sequence of hashes, it tells other nodes. This helps them identify which nodes not to follow and ensures data integrity on the network. To wrap this up, Holochain is characterized by not having bottlenecks, being agent-centric versus token-centric, enabling the collective sharing of data, and having a strong immune system response. Let's address speed. The goal is for augmented intelligence to speed up workflows by using individuals' voices naturally to build a corpus of information. A corpus is a body of data that could be analyzed to extract meanings and derive inferences. Having a corpus allows us to classify via deep learning to create suggestions and shorter workflows for users. So what is deep learning? Well, normally in machine learning, you have someone like myself who sanitizes the data and does feature extraction. Sanitizing means we remove everything in the that the computer won't understand and might skew the results. Deep learning does this on its own. If you have any questions on deep learning, please feel free to ask me during the Q&A. Our plan is to help reduce the amount of initial research and overall time it takes judges via this deep learning method. And tying this capability to pre-populated templates to bring down the overall time in each case, allowing us to scale this time savings across the system. Which brings us to ease. I know you're probably thinking, none of this sounds easy. While the details are complex, we want to reassure you that it's like riding an elevator. We don't need to know how it works. We just need to know it's going to get us to the top of the building. Now let's go, now let's put this theory into practice with Enrique. Bueno, buenos días. Les vamos a mostrar nuestra plataforma. Tiene varios perfiles. Vamos a ingresar como ciudadano. Aquí la ciudadana, citizens. por ejemplo, se Here llama... The citizen in our example is called Maria Dolores. She has a profile and a user and a password assigned by the system. As you can see, she has several options. Here, in this case, she received a letter from an EPS denying medical treatment, an HMO in Colombia. She took a photograph and she uploads it in the system. When she loads this denial of service communication, the system transforms this from a photograph to a text, as you will see. She verifies that the information is complete and our platform with the information it initially has will estimate whether there are possibilities of making a successful case or not because we want to persuade the people to look for alternatives before they use the judicial system. With this, once the analysis is completed, the citizen can send this to the community or to other citizens to comment, look, I have a case with my HMO, which has happened to me, something similar has happened to others, yes or no. She can receive comments in terms of contacting lawyers. Lawyers are rated and identified by distance. Here we're going to contact the lawyer Pedro Pulido. And the platform reminds the user that we have alternate conflict resolution mechanisms and provides her the opportunity to use any of them and contact them. Once again, we think we l must provide alternatives to persuade citizens about the use of other measures before going before a court. And here we have citizens information. We can now enter as a judge. The judge Valentina will enter the system. She has her own user and provided by the system. She has a password also assigned by the system. And as we're going to see in what follows, she can then find her profile. No, I'm sorry. This is lawyer Pedro Pulido. He corrects himself, who resides, who can find in his invoice a message where a citizen is contacting him. This information uploaded by Maria Dolores with her problem with neuropathy that the HMO does not want to care for for her. So once again, the platform estimates the probability of being successful with this case or not, and the lawyer can then directly contact the citizen. The idea is for a platform to include a chat so that the citizen can directly contact the lawyer. Here the lawyer asks questions to get more information and documentation, and at the end, based on this, the lawyer can decide 
to whether to accept the case or not. Once again, here we have the lawyer's platform, and the lawyer, for example, accepts this case. With this, the platform will analyze all the information that has been uploaded by the citizen and also recalls for the lawyer the existence of alternate conflict resolution mechanisms and produces a template for a lawsuit that basically picks up the precedents and um, this is useful for the high courts. The example here is a tutela case for the protection of fundamental rights, which has been transformed. There are spaces that continue to be open so that the lawyer can fill them in, but this will greatly reduce the time required for the lawyer's work. Here now we will enter as a judge, Judge Valentina. We wanted to reach judges because we have today many judges here with us today. Uh, user and password. We are the judge, Valentina, who has several cases already going, and then she will receive a physical case, and what she can do is record what she has been reading, and she automatically uploads it into the platform. The platform can also transform voice to text, and here we are evidencing how this is being done. And once this is uploaded, that recording, the platform converts it to text, and begins to ask a series of questions. Are you a municipal judge? No, I'm a circuit judge. Is this a civil case? No, it's a constitutional case. Is it a tutela case? Yes. Is it a first instance case? Yes. What type of fundamental right is being affected? The right to life? Yes. We click yes. Is this a social, economic, or cultural right? If the judge is not clear about this and needs more information about what is the connection here with cult cultural and social and other rights, then it can look and find constitutional court rulings. And the answer is here, yes. What right are we going to select? The right to health. What type of procedure? This is denial of medical treatment. Yes. Is it a neuropathy procedure? Yes. Is the name of the person filing the case Maria Dolores Restrepo? Yes. The um, ID, Colombian ID number, the technology can fail. And here is where the judge can manually enter changes. Here we change her ID number. Is it against this particular HMO? Yes. Verify, verify the ID of the person. And so the platform allows the judge to seek the support of other judges. And we're going to see how that works. And here there is a problem of recusals, but we're going to see how this works. Another judge called Victor enters, and in this case, once again, Victor has his user password and enters, not to upload a case, but to support a another case. So the judge can say, look, I would like to see if, if there's any colleague that can need support or that can offer support, since there are no specific, uh, there is a spe no specific data of the parties involved, but just the suggestion. I receive uh, suggestions regarding cases where there is a denial of a needed medical treatment due to neuropathy. So here the judge, Victor, suggests, look, I think that you could look at ruling T265 of 2016 and send a comment. We leave the judge's Victor profile, uh, who is uh, providing some assistance to the other judge, and we once again enter as Judge Valentina. Once again, the user, we enter the user, the password, and as you can see, she enters her case number 3123 and can see the comments that other judges may have made and can remind her the expiration date or deadline for the issue of her ruling and the platform needs to be connected to the websites of the high courts and in this case sends her to the uh, ruling which is already posted in the constitutional court website and we come back and in this case our platform allows the judge to make a ruling this is of course a model this respects the autonomy of judges very much but we believe that 
it will save judges time with the data that have already been analyzed by the system, save time regarding the analysis of uh, case law, previous case law and rulings, and m space for more analysis. Some spaces need to be filled in by the judge and others already filled in. So the judge exits, and we, I, I'd like us to get back to the profile of Maria Dolores, the citizen. So Maria Dolores enters with her user and her password assigned by, to her by the system. And as we will see right now, she, the system allows her the possibility for citizens to see the status of their case. Obviously, this implies a great challenge, which is connectivity. That and and, and the um, updating of the information in the system, but I think this will also allow for transparency so that citizens feel closer to the justice system as well. So this is a summary of these stages. And this will have to do with the specific stages of each case. And last, we have an, uh, an interface for the administrators or the superior counsel of the judicature of the judiciary, which will allow for analysis of the information that is uploaded. This information can be seen as territorial information geographically, but also includes information about rights. This is an example for a tutela, but it could be used for any type of case. And what is this important? Why is this significant? Because it could allow for the development of judicial policy and public policy. This information could be shared with the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Health. We believe that technology in terms of analyzing information and data is essential so that we can think of a future where we can be aware of the needs we all have currently as citizens and as lawyers and as Colombians. I think that I would leave this here now. Let's get back to my colleague Emerson. Thank you, Enrique. Something to take into account is that this is a minimum viable product. The idea is to select a group of individuals who are interested in developing this further for a final project. So I would like to apologize because I'm a f fake Colombian and my Spanish fails me at times, so I'm going to revert back to English. As entrepreneurs, we are Como. usually optimists. However, we really need to take a step back and analyze the risks. The first risk we have the first risk we have identified is insufficient connectivity in some regions of Colombia. Second risk is potential security and data uh, data protection. Third is possible insufficient collaboration among users on the platform. Fourth, judges having to recuse themselves because of information sharing on the platform. Fifth, the possibility of Holochain um, not fulfilling its potential as, as hosting of a communication protocol. And finally, six is the limited capability of our artificial intelligence during its training phase. Let's address these one by one. Sorry, I'm a little backed up. After Salim's presentation, I'm sure we all know that internet is gonna be worldwide very soon. But until then, um, Holochain has the ability to have a delay tolerant network so, for example, if I have a holoport, which is a hardware node on, on Holochain, um, we can basically put it on a bus and it'll be able to drive around the different uh, municipalities and collect encrypted data and take them through the network. So it's, it's basically an access for connectivity. As far as ensuring data uh, we gather is secure, this has its own list of criteria. It needs to be safely encrypted for privacy purposes, compatible with augmented intelligence to filter and update all information, Still available for sharing and learning as to allow other peers to contribute without re uh, revealing anything sensitive. Summarizable for creation of public policy and collaborative learning to be able to, be able to gain the ability of understanding through the sharing of non-binding perspectives between parties. So we're doing all this through hashing and encryption, which is the foundation of digital security today. Encryption is the multiplying of really big prime numbers. So guessing a, correct, uh, a number correctly is considered almost impossible today. Usually, someone tell, usually um, the only way to do it is if somebody told you this num the number that they began with. And this is actually what, what's called the signature. And this is what maintains security on these ecosystems, is these signatures. In regard to community building, research has shown that creating spaces of collaboration, whether physical or virtual, especially in places who have got, undergone civil conflicts, such as Northern Ireland, it helps to build trust among, it, uh, among citizens. Hence, in this platform, we're beginning 
a space for citizens to share their individual and collective concerns. The space is not only is not only to seek legal advice on specific problems, but also could be used to open further to discuss neighborhood issues that could be solved by working together instead of going to a judge. But also we believe in a space for collaborative lear learning um, could be created for judges to share materials such as papers or judicial decisions to help um, to help each other perform better in a job characterized by excess of information and constant changes. The collaborative learning space for judges will use algorithms to classify the parts of information we don't want to share. The aim is that this information of cases could be transferred into a general question to get a collaborative support from peers without releasing the names or any of the sensitive information that could create a scenario in which a judge would have to recuse himself from having prior contact with the case. So what about Holochain as a new technology not fulfilling its potential? Today we are leveraging the tech and the promises of Holochain because we think its use of agency is a key differentiator for the kind of open system we seek. To be clear though, we are committed to being tech agnostic and will regularly assess the best tech to fulfill our mission. Lastly, to address the initial limited capacity of our augmented intelligence during its training phase. AI is less about coding a perfect algorithm than it is about training an algorithm on a massive amount of information. Before AI becomes really good, we will need to be able to rely on open libraries and have, that have been put to rigorous testing. And to wrap up, how do we intend to get this idea off the ground and keep it afloat? Ultimately, we believe, a product, we believe that this product could be not only usable here in Colombia, but also sellable to the rest of the world. We are looking at, the most, at most services being free, except for lawyers, law firms, and other judicial support businesses who demand higher functional, functionality of modules. Some of the users will require priority paid positions and others will have high fidelity subscriptions like on LinkedIn. Although at this time we are, we are only citing lawyers as paying subscriptions, we, are, we also envision a freemium app with advertisers paying to reach out to specific demographics that they consider important. This is a glimpse of the range of Colombians that are connected uh, to the justice system alone, who, are connected to, who can be connected to this platform. And now back to Trey. Thank you, Emerson. Let's move on to the second way that La Justicia Somos Todos is innovative, funding. It's important for us to share that we believe that La Justicia Somos Todos may best operate on behalf of public interest. At the same time, private interest is needed, however, to continue demonstrating that collective action is not under the purview of any one entity. So in light of this, we're proposing the formation of a social impact bond for justice for Colombia. This type of model attracts what's called impact first investors, one who is more philanthropic and more interested in social change with longer term event horizons, oftentimes in excess of five years. A social impact bond is where the private sector of Colombia acts as initial trustees for an initial phased in three to five year term. And due to the fact that the entire fast track is already funded collectively, sets the tone for this approach going forward. In other countries, the government posts a bond of equal amount held in trust, and then only after demonstrated social impact, the government reimburses the contributors. However, in Colombia, we're aware that due to regulations, identical setup like this is not possible. We have been informed, though, that Bancoldex in initiated the first ever social bond here in Colombia, paving the way for further possibilities. Who might these entities be who may take on this role? Well, in the last three weeks, we've received guidance to present to those who represent centimillionaires, those who have family offices with assets over 100 million globally who are rapidly shifting towards social impact investment and whose growth is anticipated to increase between 24 and 57% in the next six years. But for now, let's go back to our diagram. Next are the intermediaries who act as engagement facilitators. Their role is principled facilitation, neutral of founder or funder agenda to ensure collaboration between all parties on both sides. Their role mimics nature in that much like a planted seed, their role is temporary. That shell falls away after the crucial role to assist the initiative has taken root, which brings us to our initiative, La Justicia Somos Todos. And on that note, let's get down to a bit more detail. What makes a true exponential startup is also applying exponential technologies not only to products, but behind the scenes as well. This allows us to keep a very small footprint of two strategists along with our legal counsel. But what do we mean by this? Even though Emerson has described to you our product and how it uses interfaces and algorithms, interfaces what people see and algorithms what goes on behind the scenes, 
This enables us to empower citizens, whether or not they work in the justice system, to exercise autonomy over information, which will encourage communities of practice to interact, learn and grow together. We will also be working arm in arm with international teams in software programming and website design, facilitation of group dynamics and group processes, the automation of relationship building, which will be essential going forward. This is what's called staff on demand and gives the pilot project a jump start, which allows us to leverage community engagement that much further. These are the other entities who are committed to Colombian citizens learning how to do initiatives like this for themselves on Colombian soil, with whom we have already started conversations and with how we may mutually build this pilot project going forward into 2019. This is an illustration of the expense activity distinguished by the blue line engagement stream orange line tech stream, gray line overhead stream, yellow line third party evaluation measures. The point to take note of here is the first three months of contracted activity. Under $50,000 US, less than 8% of the total budget for the first three months of expenses covering all 14 team members and the minimum tasks necessary to demonstrate the power of collaboration and what many hands making light work can make possible. Of course, we could only do, we could choose only to do portions of, the, of this plan by expense stream. And if we did so, this is how our zero base expense budget would segment out. Please note that we've added in a 13% contingency to overhead for additional costs like increases in CRM maintenance and contact volume, as contact volumes increase and purchasing holoports for use. Please note that introductions and resumes of the three of us who intend to continue the momentum that this fast track has initiated is included as a profile appendix to the documentation that we have submitted as part of this fast track. Moving forward, this is a high level summary of the preliminary Gantt chart that we have submitted along with this presentation. And while it looks a little bit extreme, we're going to focus our attention on the first three months, which will make or break any startup going forward. These are the metrics by which the first three months of test drive activity will be based. Starting first and foremost through our landing page, which is already live, where we will be gathering the emails of those who answer yes to coming along the journey with us. Then, if we're successful after this presentation, we'll be proceeding with the first of a series of surveys designed to anonymously gather the demographics that we need. That survey, along with many others over the next three to six months, will lead us to our first ever national conversation for 2019. From here is where we will start to learn from and with Colombians, beginning projects of their own conception with regard to inclusive, peaceful and dynamic justice and what that looks like for them. This is just a glimpse of the range of Colombians that we're seeking and from whom we can't wait to hear. So if you're a Colombian judge, a corporate, or an independent lawyer, or a citizen who feels this might be a worthwhile project, or any of the other categories here, please go to our landing page at lajusticiasomostoros.co and please let us know. In closing, the reason that we're engaging in strategic alliances isn't just for the purpose of the next three months. It, it's because we believe in beginning as we intend to continue. That means that this initiative, that if our goal is the collective engagement of the Colombian people, that we ourselves need to engage in collective engagement. We need to walk our talk as every aspect of our business operations in the exact same way. With the understanding that we're all on the same participant journey, we're all learning what it means to step into legal empowerment and learning what it means to say, yes, we can, inclusively, peacefully, and dynamically. And with that, we're going to end our presentation to you with the promotional video that will be live on our landing page for your viewing in Colombian um, at 2 p.m. Colombian time. Promotional video. ¿Quieres descubrir si tu experiencia con la justicia en Colombia puede ser diferente? 
Tal vez vives el día a día. Y esta pregunta hey, parece that question could seem to be too big to even consider. Perhaps you may think this question has makes no sense and that the system will never actually change. So why bother? Perhaps everything is just fine in your world and that question doesn't really affect you or your work or your family or your friends in any way. Perhaps if you're enthusiastic about this question and you see an opportunity to create or perhaps this question can inspire you to act together with others, your family, your work colleagues or your neighbors. Our question is still the same. Do you want to discover if your experience with justice in Colombia can be different? If the answer is no, don't worry, you're fine. But if your answer is yes, regard us as a strategic partner, either if you're a judge or an independent lawyer, corporate lawyer, or a citizen, or just any individual who is curious about and interested in justice. Why? Because we are with you. We are justicia, somos todos. And here we are to catalyze new paths for collective action to improve justice in Colombia, being inclusive and dynamic. Even though we are ready to create, first we want to hear. And yes, we have been working very hard to achieve that goal with a, an online platform that can be used as an app and that can help judges, lawyers, independent as well as corporate and citizens to generate efficient justice that is also transparent and easy and that can promote alternate, alternate conflict resolution mechanisms, create an online space where people can go to see that other reality different from the current reality. But we're very aware that any change in justice goes beyond technology, and that the remodeling of justice for Colombia needs to generate a conversation between all the parties involved. A structural change requires listening to many more people over the, a longer period of time. And we know that Colombians and those who support Colombia want this, and we need to know from you, hear from you, because this trip is just only starting, actually, far from being over. So we would like to invite you to jointly create with us a new participation path that starts with planting the seeds of this new platform, a new path that is something larger than we are ourselves, and one where finally we hope can be created by Colombians for Colombians, because ultimately it's all about listening to you. We are here for you and ultimately justice is all of us. Justicia somos todos. Gracias, damas y caballeros, por su tiempo y atención.